Official.streetsmarts at gmail.com is how you want to contact us. Listen to us right here exclusively on YouTube, Street Smart Audio. Or fuck with us. Official.streetsmarts on SoundCloud, not G. Street Smart fan page on Facebook. Street underscore smarts on Twitter. The Goofs at ECW Memories. Courtesy of PWInsider.com. Neck beer. My boy. Uh, what up, Neck Beasy? Shoot, what do you got to say today? This is the week in wrestling history as we see fit. April 28th. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> April 23rd, 1979. The biggest star of the current WWE generation, multi-time WWE and world champion, John Cena, was born. Damn, that's fucked up. Cena's only a year older than me. (laughs) And he's getting ready to walk away from the um, business full-time. And you have never been to WrestleMania. Never. That's some bullshit. And he's been like 12 times. Oh, rub it in, why don't you? Gee, thanks. I'm sorry, is, is Cena taking over as your podcast partner? Is he coming through? Is it like it's? Is do we have a special interview with John Cena? I don't know about because I'm just trying to figure out why you're putting him over the the guy who's here every week, show after show after show. What has Cena ever done for you, Fooch? He's given me a decade of great, uh, uh, great memories that I have uh, roasted him about as a part of the IWC which I am the scourge of. Well, I'm glad you said that, because I was going to tell you to hustle, loyalty, respect your ass to the next uh, uh, wrestling tidbit. April 24th, (laughs) 1990. At a WWF television taping in San Antonio, Texas, Rowdy Roddy Piper fought Rick Martel to a double DQ in an intercontinental title tournament match. What makes the match interesting is that the finals of the tournament with Kurt Hennig defeating Tito Santana for the title was taped the night before. Oh, well, well how you how do you love that? That that's so weird. I, I, you know what? I have to tip my hat to all the people who kept track of all that weird shit back in the day cuz that just seems like a pain in the ass like all right, what all right, we got to film you with the title today, but and when we go live next week, you're not going to have the title, but we're going to show this you know, two weeks from after uh, when we were live. And I mean, production scheduling is very, very uh, a demanding job, and is very thankless Sheesh. in all facets of business. I can imagine. Same day, 1983, WWF runs at the Madison Square Garden in New York City with the following results. The king of Philadelphia. Oh, shit. The leader and founder of the greatest stable in ECW history. That's right. Hot Stuff International. (laughs) My hero. Eddie Gilbert defeated Jose Estrada. ECW alum Wild Man Salvatore Belomo defeated Baron Michael Scaluna. What the fuck is Sal Belomo doing wrestling on the same card as Mr. Fuji? Mr. Fuji. Defeated Special Delivery Jones. With some salt to the eyes? Definitely. <laughs> Iron Mike Sharp defeated Johnny Rods. Pedro Morales defeated Swede Hansen. Cripper, Crippler Ray Stevens defeated Tony Guerrero. Jimmy Snuka defeated Superstar Billy Graham. Another Hot Stuff International alum. Rocky Johnson defeated Intercontinental Champion Don Morocco via Countout. Another um, Hot Stuff International alum. WWF World Tag Team Champions The Wild Samoans defeated Chief J Strongbow and Jules Strongbow. Andre the Giant defeated Big John Studd via Countout. World Wrestling Federation World Champion Bob Backlund defeated Ivan Koloff. That was a good-ass show at Madison Square Garden. 1992. ECW, then known as Eastern Championship Wrestling, crowned their first ECW champion in Philly at the Tabor Youth Association. Two separate battle royales were held with different participants, with Sal Belomo winning the first and Jimmy Snuka winning the second. Snuka then defeated Belomo to become the inaugural Eastern Championship Wrestling champion. That's a hell of a way to crown a champion, to have... Have um, two battle royals and shit. My thing is, how many people were in those battle royals? They had to be like 10 people each. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, Todd could not pay all those guys. <laughs> what are you paying them? Like 10 bucks? <laughs> 10 bucks? <laughs> 10 bucks? <laughs> 
seriously. I didn't, think, I didn't think about that. Like, think about it. Like, you, you got to think. The greatest Royal Rumble just had 50 guys. What do you think Todd's promotion had? 50 guys total? It wasn't even that. It had to be like 30 guys. Yeah, for real, for real. Like, Super D1 was in the Battle Royale. <laughs> he might have been in both of them. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sal Palomo was Super D number three in the first battle, in the second Battle Royale. <laughs> <laughs> April 26, 1992. Johnny Hotbody defeats oh, Jimmy Snuka in Philly to win the ECW Eastern Championship Wrestling Heavyweight title. Only one day after Snuka defeated Sal Belomo to become the inaugural champion. Oh, shit. Same day, 2014. WXW Superstars of Wrestling ran at Oberhausen, Germany. The WXW Legends fan convention and question and answering panel was from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m., which was free for everybody who had tickets for the show that night. This featured Steve Carino, Chris Masters, D.H. Smith, John Morrison, the WXW roster, and living legend Terry Funk. Oh, that there it is. That's why. Because I'm just sitting here like, why are we talking about some free show in No Name Germany in 2014? But it's so you could shoehorn in the obligatory Terry Funk reference just so we can chronicle Terry Lunk's... uh, Terry Lunk. Yeah, there we go. Terry Lunk's... um, uh, 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 sachets and dalliances through time and shit because again I am fairly convinced either he has a long standing unbreakable or he has some sort of time travel technology that has allowed him to be able to be in every single wrestling card from the Greco Roman Coliseum all the way down and to Hausenberg, Germany in 2014. Terry Funk was said to be 1,000 going... years old. <laughs> yeah. Even then. They, even they were on to it. Was said to go beyond the call of duty and was there signing autographs for close to three hours. Uh, he was trying to collect soul. Yes, sir. The group known as Hate and Steve Carino defeated the Pile Drivers comprising of Karsten Beck and Shah Samuels. They beat up on Carino, and they want to face a new legend. So the living legend, oh Terry oh Funk, comes God. out, punches the heels, and makes Samuels tap to the spinning toe hole. Oh, my God. Funk gets a standing ovation. Fans rush to the ringside, and it's said to have been a great moment for the promotion. It must have been a blood moon and a solar eclipse and a volcano erupted. A uh, motherfucking Loch Ness monster made an appearance, appearance, and Jimmy Hoffa um, made a YouTube video all on that day. April twenty seventh, nineteen fifty seven, the first ever tag team match involving women in the United States was held in St. Louis, Missouri, with Joan Byers and China Mira versus Peggy Banner and Bonnie Watson. Way to go, hoes! Way to go, hoes! Same day, nineteen eighty one. Wildfire Tommy Rich defeats Harley Race for the NWA World Heavyweight title in Augusta, Georgia. This ended Harley Race's fifth title reign. Harley would win the belt back four days later. Is that the one he just get, just get the belt for? Allegedly. <laughs> well, I guess you would have to suck a dick to get a, get a win over Vader. Harley Race. Or Harley Race, same thing. <laughs> same day, 2000. The Prototype defeats Smelly what? in San Diego, California to win the Ultimate Pro Wrestling Heavyweight title. John Cena? The, the Prototype is now known as John Cena. Okay, okay, see, I knew that. So here's my question to you, Hot Stuff. Uh-huh. Why would a guy from West Newberry, Massachusetts uh-huh. go all the way to California to train for pro wrestling? It's a good question. Only thing I can think of is he... Especially when you're a lifelong WWE guy. Only thing I can think of is he had a connect out there or <clears throat> either that... His or... daddy was already in the business. He was a local promoter in the Northeast. Oh, was he? Oh, maybe those porn rumors were true. Then. Because there's nothing to go to Killer Kowalski's training school or Johnny Rod's training school or the House of Hardcore or anything, or the ECW Wrestling Academy. You know what I'm saying? On the East Coast. 
Why go all the way west? April 28th, 1999, Rob Conway defeats Nasty Nick Densmore for the Ohio Valley Heavyweight title. Oh, shoot. Oh, Ohio Valley. That was um, WWE's development. Of, uh, it was. It might be a little tough getting that belt. Same day, 2002. Former NWA champion, Luthez. Oh, speaking of Luthez. Who many consider to be the greatest wrestler of all time, passed away at 86. In 2002, Luthez died at 86. 2002. So tell me how, when him and Terry Funk wrestled, and Terry Funk was at least 50 years older than him, is Terry Funk still alive? Can, can someone please answer that for me? They they got David Copperfield testifying in court, revealing his secrets and shit because he getting sued. So someone tell Bill Cosby, he d- d- apparently um, d- d- he, d- he done finally got busted for um, slipping. Name me off. Off. <laughs> And today, <laughs> April 29th, 1955, the largest crowd to attend a professional wrestling event ever assembles in Poyang, North Korea for the second New Japan Pro Wrestling event held in the Poyang Stadium as a part of the World Peace Festival. The show drew a crowd of 190,000 people, shattering the record of 150,000 from the previous day. The show was attended by Muhammad Ali and pictures of Ali, Antonio Inoki, and Ric Flair were published in all the major Korean and Japanese newspapers. Selected matches from the two-day event were later aired in the U.S. as the WCW pay-per-view special. And Terry Funk also celebrated 50 years um, in the business in that show as well. Same day, 2006, world wrestling legends held their First and last pay-per-view, oh. the 605 Reunion, oh, which was taped at the Hard Rock Cafe in Orlando, Florida. Oh, boy. Match number seven comprised of Tully Blanchard uh-huh. teaming with David Flair uh-huh. with J.J. Dillon in their corner. Uh, versus Dory Funk Jr. Oh, I knew Jr. it. I fucking knew it. And Mike Graham with Bruno Sammartino, rest in peace, in their corner. Oh, what? Terry was uh, laying in the in his coffin that day. He was in his Lazarus, Lazarus pit. <laughs> <laughs> Dory got out. And said, yeah, all right. Your Dory, turn. Said, Dory, you got a match coming up <laughs> in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> Let me get the Lazarus chamber for about six years, and I won't come out to 2014 in yeah. Germany. Yeah, that's is that. Yep, I could see it. Oh, man, we finally cracked the motherfucking case. And that is the week in wrestling history as we see fit. If you want to know more, hit up PWI, PW Insider, and hit up The Neck Beard. beard. Give a special shout out to Neck Beasy. He really likes that. And on that note, just for you, in a few, the Extreme Retro Review. Peace. Peace. Peace.